ice camera action. What's up guys and welcome to the secret letters of a hacker. In this video, we're talking about number seven, depending on what year it is, of the OWASP top 10 cross site scripting, but more specifically, document object model cross site scripting, otherwise known as DOM. <laughs> Who said that? So on the real for a second, I've been obsessed with cross site scripting. I've been eating, sleeping, dreaming cross-site scripting why because i'm trying to get this bounty money boy now 46 percent of web applications have critical vulnerabilities and 30 percent are vulnerable to cross-site scripting so what is dom based cross-site scripting <laughs> well this occurs when websites render certain characters unsanitized causing the browser to execute malicious JavaScript. And the DOM allows JavaScript to access and manipulate web pages, HTML, and CSS. This is important because if an attacker can execute JavaScript on the site, they'll have access to the DOM and that can perform actions on the site on behalf of the targeted user. Now, the DOM is the resulting program built over the HTML document and consists of primarily two parts, the source and the sync. Now, the vulnerability arises when JavaScript takes data from the attacker controllable source, such as the URL, for example, and passes it over to the sync that supports what? Dynamic code execution, which just means the sync executes the code sent to it by the source. Now, let's make a distinction between two parts. Source code is what we see by pressing Control U in a browser, while the DOM is what we see in the Elements tab of the Browser Developer tool by pressing F12. Now, some cross-site scripting attacks don't even require server vulnerabilities. As JavaScript becomes more sophisticated, many web developers are pushing their logic to the client side for you to deal with in your browser. As a result, URI fragments are the part of a URL after the hashtag, which means a browser isn't making round trips back and forth to the server and is relying on getting interpreted by JavaScript on the client side, which begs the question, which syncs can lead to DOM-based vulnerabilities? Well, we can do a simple Google search for that and I bet it'll be number one on the list. Or we can use Burp Suite, Zap, or in this instance, we're gonna use XSS Strike to point us in the right direction of possible vulnerabilities. All right guys, let's see some cross-site scripting in action. I'm gonna come over here to OWASP Juice Shop that I'm hosting over at Heroku app. So if you go to this website, you can do the same exact thing. And while we're up here, you can see the hashtag after the URL, which means everything else is gonna be a URI fragment that gets executed by JavaScript in the DOM and it's not going back to the server for validation. Let's go ahead and throw this over in XSS Strike. And what XSS Strike can do for us is look for any kind of vulnerability. So download the Python script, open up PowerShell. We're going to reach out to OWASP Juice Shop and do a simple crawl. And here, came back pretty quickly, told us vulnerable component over in jQuery component location. So let's take a look at this. We'll come back over here to the OWASP page. We're gonna press F12 to open up the developer tools. We're gonna come over here to debugger and it said that the vulnerable component was in this location right here. So we'll go in Cloudflare, Ajax, 
jQuery 2.24 and we're going to come down here and hit the pretty five button and if we come over here to port swigger DOM based vulnerabilities if we scroll down we can see which syncs can lead to DOM based vulnerabilities and it says the following list provides a quick overview of common DOM based vulnerabilities and an example of a sync that can lead to each one. For a more comprehensive list of relevant syncs, please refer to the vulnerability specific pages by clicking on the links below. So here we have the DOM based vulnerability and here we have an example of the sync and what came back to us was Ajax. Here's the vulnerability, here's the sync. If we click on it, it'll give us more information on what DOM based Ajax request header manipulation is. So what this says is which things can lead to DOM based Ajax request header manipulation vulnerabilities. The following are some of the main things that can lead to DOM based Ajax request header vulnerabilities. So what we can do is we can go through here, we can then input them into our developer tool by control F and do a find and there you have it. So with all that information now, we can assume that this site is going to be vulnerable to DOM based cross site scripting. And we can either do our injection here in the URL, anywhere we can find an input field, looks like just these two right here. So let's invoke an iframe with the source as JavaScript. And we're going to tell it to give us an alert box with cross site scripting in there. And we'll go ahead and close it off. So what this is saying is if you're vulnerable to DOM based cross site scripting, which we think you are because of what we found so far, give us an alert box. An alert box is pretty much just a proof of concept of non malicious arbitrary JavaScript execution. For example, we can be more malicious with this and do things like steal cookies control victim's browser, alter the content of the site, or steal passwords from password managers. Now, if we do a F12, come back over here to the inspector tab, and we do a search. As you can see, it's down here, and it gets executed in the DOM. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, you're missing out on some life-changing events, man. Well, maybe not life-changing events, but, but you get the point. Now, all the material I use will be free in the links below, so check that out. And you can hit me up on Discord, you can hit me up in the comments, or you can hack me outside, bro. How about that?